All right, let's uh, practice applying um, the theories in solving problems. Let's say um, they're asking you to find out the hybridization type and the geometry of oxygen and nitrogen of the following compounds in their most stable structure. There are a couple points. In order to um, solve the problem, you have to answer the question, right? So you make sure you provide the answer for hybridization for oxygen and nitrogen, not carbon or anything else. Then you have to also mention the geometry. Not necessarily always intuitive, but geometry of not the whole molecule, but around the oxygen and the nitrogen. And most importantly, not the structure given, but in their most stable structure, unless the given structure is the most stable structure. Therefore, this question is asking you to know um, how you figure out the hybridization and also the difference between uh, just uh, shape and uh, arrangement of the um, electrons. Then, uh, whether you know the stability of uh, possible structures, such as resonance structures, you can choose the uh, best contributor or minor contributor, and so on. Especially if the question is giving you a hint like resonance, then you must try drawing all the resonance possible, then compare their stability or the basicity to find the most stable form to work out, to figure out hybridization type and geometry of the oxygen and the nitrogen, not other atoms. Okay, here is one structure. Take a couple moments and um, figure them out. And on the formal test, it is extremely important to show everything in the appropriate manner. So when you show the um, resonance structures, you need to use correct arrow. And also, in order to figure out hybridization type, it's always essential to show all relevant um, lone pairs. So I found one resonance structure here, and I can see the second one being more stable, and uh, it is a major contributor. That's because electron densities are on the uh, more electronegative oxygen rather than uh, carbon that is um, not attracting electron and stabilizing as much as oxygen. So in the given structure, you choose. The oxygen has one, two, three, four pairs of electron to be put in in the hybridized orbital. As a second shell element, you can use from the stable orbital 2s then three P's and you already have four um, encounter to be mixed so that's enough so sp3 hybridization for oxygen so you put it there then you talk about geometry oxygen has four electrons in the tetrahedral arrangement but that's not the geometry geometry is only encountered encountering the atoms something that we can measure with the x-ray or alpha alphapharic particles or something like that so you have oxygen connected to only carbon so it is a linear structure right so linear there is no nitrogen so that's it and I'm not going to waste my time on other atoms because the questions are specifically asking that. And if you attempt to answer something that's not asked, it is not a good impression. 
Okay, here is the second molecule. Take a look and figure it out. So here, with a negative charge on the carbon, you have three bonds. So that's three electrons of carbon its own. So to be negative, you need to put two more electrons. Then that makes total of eight electrons. So it's okay for second shell. And then you have five its own electron, one, two, three and the four with the two bonds of hydrogens. Then uh, fifth one with the carbon, so negative charge. So I know uh, you need to move this electron to, sh be, to be shared and form double bond and you break it. And we know nitrogen is supposed to have a five electron to be neutral as it's shown, but it's not shown lone pair. So like I said before, it is important to put all the lone pairs. So you need to put two more to be neutral and then breaking bond, a pair of electrons from two, one of the two bond, bond, pi bonds becoming lone pair gives them two. And then now you count one, two, three, four, and five, six, it's own. So it's a negative charged on um, nitrogen. And these two are the only uh, resonance structure possible as the hint says. Uh, so which one's more stable? Again, carbon's not as good as a nitrogen in terms of a stabilizing um, excessive electron. Therefore, we choose this as a major contributor, the most stable form. Then there is no oxygen, so nitrogen's right here. Then you know you have one pi bond that's not uh, built by mixed orbital. So you need only one two, three electron pairs. So you start mixing um, stable one S then two P's, three pairs you need two. So SP2, nitrogen has SP2 hybridization. And then again, although the electron pairs of the hybridized orbitals um, in the hybridized orbitals are arranged as a trigonal planar, but geometry is decided by atoms, so it's again linear around the nitrogen in this structure. Here, new structure. Now you have oxygen and the nitrogen. A new thing about this structure is that you don't have a carbon and hydrogen shown. So you need to know the drawing. So this one, you know, a line and angle drawing, you need to know what uh, each corner means. Okay, this would be my answer if I take the exam. Uh, I would try my best to uh, show my answer most logically in most uh, succinct, clear way to the grader. At the same time, I'm gonna try to show everything that's relevant. So here first I put the lone pairs on the oxygen and nitrogen in the neutral state. Then uh, I notice right away that there are two ways of moving electron towards the uh, positive attractive um, charge since the lone pair and the pi electrons are negatively uh, charged and attracted to to be to be more stable so i try to move the lone pair of oxygen number one then i show the resonance of number one by this arrow number one then i get i get this then when i move uh, this one and I would get uh, the resonance coming also from nitrogen. Then I would get this one. Then this one is also, uh, you know, possible using this one. If you, nitrogen lone pair try to resonate, eventually come back to that. Then also you can think of one more resonance. There we are. So I moved the pi electron to the electronegative nitrogen with a positive charge. So you got this one. And I could come up with a few more if you try to give a negative charge on the carbon, but I would like to um, ignore them. That's highly unstable um, contributors. So the golden rule here is that um, you need to share electron as much as you can. So this lone pair unshared electrons not as stable as the shared ones. So those two are the more stable ones right away, you can tell. 
and out of these two which one's more stable the difference is this lone pair sits on the nitrogen and you have a lone pair instead of you know shared it's on the oxygen so when you share same number of electron pairs in the pi system which is better having lone pair on the nitrogen or on the more electron negative uh, oxygen so obviously this one's more stable then you can say oxygen has a four pairs of electron to be placed in the hybridized orbital so you say sp3 then the nitrogen has one pi bond using unshared electron i mean um uh, sorry uh using the uh unhybridized p orbital to form so you need only three pairs of electron in the hybridized orbitals three of them so sp2 for the nitrogen notice that i'm not using the uh, easy ways of figuring out sometimes doesn't work like single bond so only single bond sp3 double bond sp2 triple bond sp or two double bonds on the same carbon sp like the one in the previous example i don't do that because it doesn't work sometimes then you have to answer the geometry so around the oxygen you have uh, two uh, sigma bonds not linear but bent right so the geometry for oxygen is a bent and the geometry for nitrogen is a trigonal planar if you look at the atoms around uh, nitrogen okay here is one more structure now it's a radical so your arrow must be fish hook shape of arrow for one electron moving so let me show you how the arrow uh, works right uh, normally when you draw arrow arrow starts from the negative ion because those are the electron actually initiating they they feel unstable so they want to go to the attractive place which is a positively charged place for ra radical bonds are again stable one unstable ones are the radical so it's always better thinking of the radical moving first and then taking one of the neighboring um, electron it could be pi it could be sigma bond as well here and the other one now must go to the, the other atom. Although you got the same stability uh, resonance contributor, you have to show your thinking process. So um, if you omit this thinking process, you may not get the full credit because you don't do things that you are supposed to do there is a certain protocol you need to follow no matter how the situation looks not emergency right if you are emergency responder you would not skip anything so same thing for science you will have to do everything that's required and you need to go through thinking process you practice the protocol using simple molecule, but when you have a more complex molecule, which is the usual case in the later organic chemistry, it's always beneficial to go through the thinking process and you are getting used to it. You are building habit of thinking the you know, protocols. So here is how I would put answer if I'm taking this test. So I'm saying this is the same stability I have will uh, state it then i'll say um oxygen here is sp2 oxygen there you can say sp2 or sp3 but i will say both showing my professor that i know that um you know with the two pairs this radical can be placed in p orbital or it could be placed in the hybridized orbital the energy difference is really uh, um, depending on the neighboring groups but this question is not asking that so we don't want to think too much so overthinking is a you know time wasting therefore i'm gonna put both then uh, that's only because both can be answers 
okay then I'm gonna say both oxygens are linear yep let's say these are given the following nucleophiles react with uh, this strong nucleophile BF3 electrophile BF3 show the very first arrow for mechanism so then uh, just show the first arrow again please um, not put anything more than that's asked then you're not answering the question and worst the case what if you make a mistake there therefore please try to answer just answer the question as fast as possible as clear as uh, you know possible and leave out anything not essential that would be redundant so the question is already stating that these are electron acceptor electrophiles these are the nucleophiles so you don't have to show arrow coming from acid to the base right so on the nucleophilic molecule find the electron pair that's going to be acting as a nucleophile so the first one here you have electronegative atom oxygen so uh, you're going to be finding two lone pairs then thinking about lone pair versus the pi bond which is a more elect a more stable pi bond so the one that's reacting would be lone pair the most unstable one so arrow starts from the lone pair and given to the molecule here but when you look at the molecule trigonal planar with the sp2 hybridization and there is no double bond but it's sp2 and there's a one empty orbital p orbital for boron and the fluorine is the most electronegative as you know partially negative then boron must be partially positive so the electron will be attracted to the boron so the very first arrow that's it here nothing is negative but when they come close this permanent uh, dipole moment molecule can induce the charge on the nonpolar so it's kind of interaction you heard uh, between permanent dipole and induced dipole kind of interaction so one of the two electron pairs here and everything here they're all sigma bonds even here one of them is a sigma bond so most reactive one would be pi electron so here and going there then if i'm writing my answer obviously i'm gonna put this and here pi so as you can see uh, I tried when I was an undergrad student to show everything that's essential, everything that can uh, strengthen my answer, everything that clarifies, or uh, especially when professor don't know what you're trying to say easily, or you don't know what he really wants, he or she really wants. So um, I'll try my best to put um, answer as much as I can. And if I have time left, I'll come back and try to put more. Then again, this molecule is a nucleophile, so I'm looking for negative. If there is none, then I'm looking for most unstable one. But here you have a, one of the electronegative nitrogen, lone pair, partially negative. Now it's a permanent dipole and interacting with a permanent dipole. Arrow going straight to the uh, boron from nitrogen lone pair not from the negative sign not from the symbol of nitrogen but from the lone pair so let's practice on um, drawing this question um, they will give you Newman projection then you have to convert to the linear uh, sorry line angle drawing with the wedge and dash then assign IUPAC name for each so when when you uh, face problem with the Newman projection it's naturally like Newman projection is a three-dimensional perspective of a molecule so you should not attempt to draw it 
plain two dimensional uh you know drawing methods and especially uh if the professor gave you wedge and dash you know wedge and dash is for uh three dimensional so this means the intention of the professor is to see whether you can translate three dimensional information given in the newman projection without being changed on the new drawing also when they say line angle drawing, they don't want you to use carbon and hydrogen symbol there. If you do, according to this rule, you are wrong. And if professor give you a hint, like don't show carbon hydrogen, that person is being extremely nice. Also, when you assign uh, IUPAC name, um, students do forget about uh, isomerism, cis, trans, r, s, and especially when you have a wedge and dash and human projection, right? You have to be extremely careful not to change the stereochemistry or whether you know some compound is a chiral molecule or not. Just having some wedge and dash doesn't mean the molecule has RS absolute configuration. It only happens when molecule has chiral center, right? Here is the Newman projection. Uh, we can name this already. I think you should be prepared for it. But let's uh, convert it to the more used to uh, line angle drawing than uh, name it. But here, uh, you should see a um, three-dimensional perspective. And you have a one, two, and then carbon behind three, and four, and five as a longest chain. So you draw one, two, three, four, and five. Then I would number them one, two, and uh, three. I'm going to say behind and the four and the five then I'm gonna say one two three and the four and five as you can see I'm again trying to clarify my answer the number two has a methyl group coming this way and I put chain this way meaning I flip the molecule this way right so number one was here so this way right there meaning as you turn that way and the number one's pointing up i have uh, this methyl group on number two going away from me so i'm gonna be saying this okay don't put ch3 then you are violating the rule for the line angle drawing Number three has two groups, this and number four. So if you flip the molecule like I demonstrated earlier, a second ago, the methyl group sticking out and it's pointing up. So it's right there on number three. Then there is a number four and number five. But number four, they didn't specify whether the two methyl group both are out in whatever stereochemical information is missing. So you cannot tell. So you just put it anywhere you want. Again, the grader is supposed to uh, you know, uh, expect you know the rules about drawing. So if you put this methyl line over here, then they can assume that you don't know how to draw because there are too many electrons in one place. So uh, spread them apart. So you can uh, show them that you know Vesper or the regular uh, concept of drawing. This molecule is tricky. This carbon center looks like it's almost like a chiral center. Uh, if this was R, this was S, then you can say they are different group. But you can't because this carbon is not chiral. 
you have two same groups that as well a chiral carbon center with the two same groups so these two are identical group therefore this is not chiral center therefore do not say rs if you do your answer is wrong so there is no isomerism just name it regularly therefore the number one find the longest chain right there pentane with a no double triple bond so pentane then you find three groups two three four so you got the two three four tri methyl pentane here it's pretty uh, simple molecule I think this is a giveaway point. Uh, you have two carbons here with a just hydrogen, nothing special, and you have a two more there. So this is just a butane. But when you say butane, butane, butane can have many isomers, right? So make sure you say this is the normal straight chain isomer, N-butane. Here is the other uh, interesting um, molecule with the ring structure. And I hope you notice that you have one, two, three, and then behind four, five, and six connected. It's a cyclohexane. And then this, this CH2 is pointing down and these are pointing up while these two and those two are straight from your perspective. So it is a chair form. And you should practice enough to see this in the three-dimensional that the BR is actually on the, um, what? Axial. And CH3 is equatorial, but this hydrogen is also equatorial. And the difference is this equatorial is pointing down one. This is pointing up one. And this axial is also uh, like a pointing up axial, while these hydrogens are pointing down axial. And also you have to be careful when you translate it into the line angle drawing that bromine and the methyl groups are in the one two three relationship and the bromine to the carbon you are going clock uh, sorry counterclockwise okay so do not lose that information or change it so i'm gonna be um quickly numbering the relevant carbons i'm not gonna do over uh, more than that's necessary and then i try to draw cyclohexane chair form as close as possible to this so i basically tilted this molecule a little bit this way so the two goes here one goes there three comes out of the paper a little bit then uh, bromines going up in the axial and then on the no number three methyls going equatorial like this don't put CH3 you're wrong don't put hydrogen you're wrong don't just draw a line and leave it you meant hydrogen but if you just leave a line like this you meant methyl group those are all considered wrong answer and you find the longest chain to name them, uh, name it, and you have a cyclohexane six carbon ring. Yes, it's true that when you have a seven carbon on the chain, then you can consider the chain as a main chain with the seven carbon rather than six. But for the ring structure, you can do the other way around. You can give a priority to the ring. But anyway, for cyclohexane, um, right now, that's a main chain, so you know it is a, it is a cyclohexane, the mother chain, no double triple bond, so hexane. Then when you give numbering, uh, I gave already a number because I'm used to, and you will be doing same, right? Uh, methyl groups and the bromine they are both considered as substituents in the naming bromine is not really considered as a special functional group that you give a priority to then you can be either like one two three or one two three then why do i give a number one for the bromine the rule is 
the prioritized one gets the lowest possible number then i just said bromine is just uh, one of the uh, group yeah but uh, bromine start with the b but this group starts with the m so this gets a priority therefore you say one bromo dash two methyl when you put them in one line put them together but when you have to split give a hyphen just like the grammar english grammar right um, your english professor when you write big thesis about um you know how to save the world or something um they will still deduct point for the uh, grammar or typo and why wouldn't the scientists do scientific rules are more strict in a way you know jokingly they're inhumane so uh if you miss out the hyphens especially between number and the letter the answer is wrong so be careful those are little thing but it might um, you know, cost you some uh, critical couple points. All right, then isomerism. Do you have any um, chiral centers? Of course, one, two. Then um, this one, try what you got and uh, here as well. Like I showed you this way, when you imagine the cyclohexane in three-dimensional, these are the ones that are on the paper. And this line here is coming towards you if you look at it from this carbon's perspective. It's coming out. And these lines are above the paper. So here it is, CH2. And the hydrogen's here. So you have to stay here above all these three to have number four the hydrogen away from you so your perspective is looking at it from the uh from the top and to the molecule on the paper so over the paper to the paper that's how you look at it because hydrogen's away from you that way then you find the bromine number one easy number four hydrogen easy but this CH2 and that CH2, which is this and this, they're identical. So how do you um, go by it? Well, you go next, right? So next of this is here, and next of that is here, and you, uh, you have a winner. This one has two carbon on this carbon and the one hydrogen, but that one has one carbon and two hydrogen. So this carbon wins. So your number two is here, number three is there. You connect, it's going counterclock, so it is S. And if you try this one without you know taking it out see you can do it you have hydrogen to be here and looking up that's the right perspective then the smallest one except the hydrogen number four this methyl group is number uh, two sorry number three and number one is this one this ch2 because it is close to the br and this is a number uh, two, right? So one, two, three, fours away. So from this guy, if you try, draw the circle, one, two, three, that's our perspective above the paper, but this person's below. So it should be opposite, right? So it's still S. So this carbon also has an S absolute configuration. So how do you put it? In front of the name, you put one, the number one, S, and three, also S. So this is the name. Okay, next question. We want to work on uh, something related to the reaction. So uh, all the reactions are happening due to the... Uh, uh, the difference of the um, Gibbs free energy of the reactant and product like this that is the heat given off by becoming more stable product 
from unstable uh, reactant and that's going to be connected to the um, delta G equals negative RT ln K and K is the ratio of the product and the reactant so the more negative heat the negative uh, in the Gibbs free energy the more product you form that is the thermodynamic perspective of reaction but this question is asking you about transitional state structure so um, transitional state is here that you have to go through to become a product so you need some energy to break the you know current bond and then overcoming some steric hindrance then as you go to the product if the product that's forming is more stable it's going to be rapidly drop the energy and get stabilized if the one that you are trying to form gradually getting electron or breaking bond or forming bond at the same time uh, it happened to be less stable then you are going up in the energy so you require a lot more uh, energy so that much is going to be your activation energy and activation energy is a proportional uh, in a function uh, to the uh, reaction rate so kinetically uh, affecting so the kinetic is controlled by the transitional state structure and their energy so uh, it's somehow uh, related to um, Hammond postulate here so this question is asking you about transitional state structure um, not whether the transition state is early transition or late transition I mean it is a part of it but it asks structure so uh, you have to be also careful with the 3d structure um, if it's exothermic like this yeah tr transition state comes early and you get the reactant like structure but if it's a endothermic process then the transition state structure should be closer to that of the react sorry the product and it comes late so late transition and you have to break more bond so here what's happening is ch3 right reacting with the ccl2 but that's not appropriate on the test especially after you learn three-dimensional that's not uh, proper you have to show this way but this way it's not easy to show because all the bonds are on the plane and the p orbital that's holding radical will be coming out of the paper into the paper how would you show that that's not good as well so this should be already something you've been practicing uh, it's always better showing a imaginary piece of paper so we can imagine how this is located in the space then on that you show hydrogen 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 and if you are worried that what if a professor don't understand you can tell this is a trigonal planner on a paper that is tilted out from the uh, from the board I mean table if you are really mathematical person I wouldn't do that that's too much but you can say angle <laughs> it's a little joke then you say um, I have a p orbital now like, parallel to the paper right and you have a radical right there that's the reactant then um, you know as you take electron from the sigma bond you are breaking this bond and you're forming this radical using this radical and forming this bond so this bond is extremely weak
that's more stable. So we are forming more stable bond by breaking weak bond. So more stable bond by breaking weaker bond. You know, I want to say that I'm not just going to draw something without justifying. You know, that's like when you write essay, you're supposed to give justification in the main writing but you don't do enough then your essay your answer will be weak for any other uh, writing test right so i'm going to be saying this bond is weak because that's the only justification that you show you know to choose um this exothermic if you choose exothermic it is exothermic so uh, the reason i gave for bond being weak for chlorine chlorine is due to the lone pairs lone pair repulsion or you can even say weak bond okay then you show the reaction ch3 cl radical on the chlorine then more stable bond thus so this was something i used to explain to you about general idea of the thermodynamics and kinetics right but uh ignore this on your answer sheet we'll say thus Thus, exothermic and early transition. So you don't leave out anything. But the answer they want is um, um, transitional state structure. So structure on this. Okay, This is part of your own thinking, so you need to do it anyway. Uh, so this one, uh, so transition state will resemble the reactant, this guy three-dimensional structure of that guy it's not going to be exactly like that so when you dot it lined with a chlorine early transition meaning this reactant is far from the other you know reactant and then you have just the beginning of the bond break you know just the beginning of the bond break and the long way to break away this chlorine break away to be product so then this needs to be these hydrogens they because of the electrons repelled by the electron on the chlorine they will tilt away this way so the structure you actually show is in the parenthesis with a double dagger I would put carbon not too much like sp3 slight bending i don't want professor to think that uh, slight bending i write it out because i don't want professor to think that i think this is sp3 kind of bending like a product then i'm saying the transition state looks like the product so i don't want that slight bending If you want to impress professor better i would i used to do that yeah one radical some electron here some electron there yep that's it okay this is a good exercise for actual reaction because there are four types of reactions and you need to know by looking at the reactants or the products uh, you should be able to uh, figure out what the uh, type of the reaction might be and um, not just the four types substitution elimination rearrangement and addition but in the substitution we already seen radical substitution or ionic substitution like sn1 sn2 Later, you will be learning um, um, electrophilic substitution, not nucleophilic. 
also in the elimination you have e1 e2 and there could be other type as well later and if if you do addition you have a markovnikov addition anti markovnikov addition sin addition anti addition you no know? oh yeah hoffman elimination a lot of uh, uh, details you need to remember So here's one reaction. If professor gives you hint like answer the question like SN1 with a rearrangement uh, E2 Hoffman, then yeah, the person trying to be extremely nice to you. Even uh, professor don't say those things. If I was taking exam, I will say those things because they always emphasize about different uh, selectivity, different types of uh, mechanism, you know, by comparing Hoffman, Jaijef, you know, um, Sin, Anti, Audition. Those are the types of reaction too, right? But I'm not going to say backside attack. This is not reaction type. It's the feature of mechanism. So this is also a giveaway, a uh, simple uh, reaction. You have a small base, a very strong. Already, you know, this is bimolecular because it's a strong base. And then small here, small there. So uh, you can attack carbon. Therefore, this is a SN2. You don't have to say inversion or those things. They're not mechanism. So SN2. They didn't ask you to show a product and they don't want um, a product they don't want mechanism they just want type of reaction again this is the typical situation you have two reactants given and uh, i think only problem for some people with the uh, weak structural um, perspective would be this compound it's not shown the uh, stereochemistry around this carbon but um, you can draw it this way for your own thinking so you know carbon has chlorine on it carbon on it so two bonds are made and you can see these things two methyls cannot be on the chlorine so it must be on this carbon so I put all those three methyl and methyls and the one chlorine there so it's basically tertiary alkyl halide very crowded for the carbon to react for substitution unless you do sn1 so e2 is fairly difficult here you have okay ionic bond very strong base you can notice and strong base but sterically hindered um, substrate so sn2 is not possible so you do e2 Here, you also have a similar drawing, I mean writing basically, formula, chemical formula. And you have the product, no uh, uh, conditions. So you have to compare them and see what happened. Okay, well, when you see the double bond, you can say elimination already. But then whether it's E1 or E2, it's something you have to think about based on the reactant. So let's draw them out. So here it is, um, this carbon here is right there with the one, two, three methyl groups. This carbon has hydrogen and chlorine and the methyl group. I put it in a, a staggered form. If you see it from there, it's a, a staggered form to be stable. And I looked around the alpha carbon, it's a secondary, so you can have a substitution and elimination there. Therefore, I have to look for the beta hydrogens. They're there, and those three are freely rotating. So, if you want Hoffman, you can do it. But here, I look for the hydrogen. There are none. So, uh, you know, I didn't. I don't have to put hydrogen and the chlorine as a, a anti. So, this is fine drawing, even when you translate. Uh, for reaction right as you can see you need to consider things for given situation and uh, put it by recognizing potential 
uh, situations. But we said earlier this is an elimination already, so double bond is formed here. But difference is the carbon has only two and the two, but there you have a three and a one. So you know one of the carbon moved. So E2 normally doesn't have a rearrangement, right? So it must be E1. Let's take a couple seconds to confirm E1. If it's E1, you may have some weak base. They don't show you, but you know if they, they do, they must have. So you lose the leaving group by heating secondary carbocation, shift the anti one shift the best anyway. So shift, then that makes two, and then two methyl group over here, and that makes the tertiary um, carbocation. Then this hydrogen, the beta hydrogen to the carbocation will be attacked by the weak base with the heating maybe and the bulky base probably and you get the uh, product so E1 is fine. So this is E1 only because you have a rearrangement. But please notice I would, if I'm taking exam, it doesn't take more than 10 seconds to double check. This one, well, I wouldn't even bother to uh, figure out the geometry here or, um, you know, uh, configuration there. As you go through, you have the carbon with two methyl groups, missing one. Here, two attachments, missing one. So there must be double bond there and it's gone. And you had two methyl groups on that carbon. Now you have additional hydrogen and the other carbon had a one hydrogen but now two hydrogen so it's so obvious that you had H to add it. Maybe they used some catalyst, whatever it is, we don't care. So this must be addition. So you should say addition but syn addition because you heard about anti-addition of hydrogen, right? So you want to make sure syn addition. Is your answer okay now um, third type of uh, problems uh, the hint given now is like absent of the reactant no reactant shown there's only this base shown and the product but whatever the situation is you cannot miss the fact that you have these three carbons with a triple bond found in the product this is awfully like this negative carbon attacked on something and kick out the leaving group and you remain there. That's replacement. And the replacement done by the negative charge. So it's a strong base. So it wouldn't be SN1. It should be SN2. So like we said, oh, this is attacking group and that is the target with the leaving group. So target, the leaving group. If they specify the stereochemistry like this or something, then you have to think about what stereochemistry you're going to put. However, with this exact um, cyclopropane, um, you don't have to worry about, you know, sticking out or going in with a um, dashed line because the molecule is a symmetrical. It's not even chiral molecule. Okay. If you have other attachment here, then you have to worry about how would you design the stereochemistry knowing uh, SN2 gives you um, inversion of configuration. So you have to give opposite configuration here than there, but it's not the case here. So this question is relatively easy. Uh, the problem for some of you is like a typical nucleophiles are the one with the oxygen and nitrogen, but it wasn't the case. But whatever the negative ion is, it could. And then the product is showing you the nucleophile replacing something so um, if you are only practicing solving problem from reacting, reacting with something else, then you are going to have a hard time for previous couple questions where you have a reactant and only product. And the tougher time with this kind of case, when the product is given, not reactant. But in real life as a researcher, you know, we don't know always what reactant we use. And uh, um, you have to work backwards many, many times. 
so um, practice this type as well please here is another problem uh, again it's the third type so you have well mixed three types of problems um, you have product again and you have a isopropanol isopropanol is like this rubbing alcohol and do you see them yes right there so if you know this is sitting on the product this is either addition or um, um, substitution but for addition of alcohol you need H plus as a catalyst to break double bond but you don't have they're not giving you in the condition so it's not addition problem it's been it must be SN substitution but then is it SN1 or SN2 well look at your base this guy it's weak base so it must be SN1 <clears throat> another hint I mean, they are not, they're not asking you the type of reaction, but um, look at this target. It's a tertiary where the leaving group was. So tertiary with the isopropanol, iso, uh, whatever the base is, right? It's normally is elimination. So it must be not bimolecular, but unimolecular. So the target like this tubule group with the leaving group you don't need to know um, all of these discussions but if you know this is from your um, weak base and then if this is a tertiary a target with a leaving group that's all you need to solve this problem but if you know other stuff you can ensure uh, your answer but also that makes you to approach more complicated problems so um, I recommend you to go through these thinkings rather than just attacking um, problems only. Okay, other type of possible problem would be fill in the boxes. This could be multi-step synthesis or um, providing a product when they have uh, reactants and the conditions or it could be uh, filling in the conditions or it could be the third type uh, filling in the box for uh, you know reactant you need to provide reactant because they gave you product and the uh, um, condition so let's take a look try not to show mechanism and for your thinking you need to but put only the required answer in the box if you put uh, two answers hoping uh, professor choose a better answer for you and that's not gonna happen so you choose the best answer put only best answer there in the box so when you look at these things again uh, unless they told you that this reaction is about SN2 something um, you need to always look for the acid and base here is your base here is your acid I don't choose this carbon as acid over hydrogen because it's more crowded so activation energy is higher and the hydrogen has a more charge so you attack here and break this right you don't need to but I need it to think then uh, you know you form this as a product you may say how about this which one do you think is a major compound they try to form we don't know but you know I would put this there if you really are worried what if he wanted methane gas I put it there then um, you know uh, that's best thing you can do okay here uh, the three-dimensional features given that means you need to consider especially so uh, the Fischer projection uh, means these are going away from you and they are coming towards you so remember that so hydrogen sticking up here therefore your strong base try to attack on the secondary carbon from behind 
if you approach from here hydrogen is going to be flipped going over and then uh, cyanide will stay here so the only thing you have to worry about is is it possible well secondary can have a sn2 and e2 and the base is a small enough so yes you can have um, sn2 and sn2 is favored because of the more um, columbic attractions making um, activation energy lower so you can give answer like this that's the easiest thing if you know the um, notation of the fissure otherwise you're gonna have to redraw this in your own uh, best drawing and then provide the answer unless it is a specified that you have to show answer in some drawing okay so you can freely choose so this SN2 gives you inversion product there you see cyclohexane from the previous uh, lessons, you know, cyclohexane, it changes the conformation dramatically depends on the groups on it, right? And also, the more stable um, conformation is the main one that you need to work with. Same for everything else, even the normal chain. You have to work with the, you know, uh, most stable form. So, I wouldn't do anything on this drawing because it's very deceiving especially if your professor ever mentioned about like cyclohexane has a certain limitation why would you so i will put this way and find the most stable conformation possible so the golden rule is the bigger group has to be on the equatorial and we know methyl group it's a bigger than bromine although bromine is a huge atom methyl is a um, sort of group of atoms so this is bigger and then you should not change the relative location and then the relative orientation in the space so i look for the uh, best equatorial for methyl group and for your own thinking, I think it's best to put it in the most similar way. So I could choose methyl group equatorial here or there. But as you can see, that is pointing down, right? So equatorial here is pointing up. So I'm going to put it here. Then you look for counter sorry clockwise one two three four one two three four then i have to put the bromine but how do you know it's equatorial or axial we learned that you don't have a choice it shows that it is going up so here it must go up luckily it is on the equatorial so this cyclohexane is in the most stable form this way then you have a small strong base it's good for um, sn2 unless you have a problem here on the target so you look for the acid since you found the base acid is right there and you're trying to attack from back side hydrogen is hanging down here right so you come from the back side pushing hydrogen up okay that's the motion of the atom but a reaction arrow is like this so the product would be hydrogen up and OH axial down. That should be the product unless OH is bigger than this group. So this must be avoiding the axial, but that's not the case. The um, methyl group is bigger, so this is good as it is. Your answer. And this is SN2. Secondary can react with a small base, no problem. Okay, um, little application uh, is here in this question. Uh, it is confusing for some people because you have double bond in the BR2 and you're thinking addition, dibromo uh, addition in anti, right? 
but you have H nu. So have you ever seen H nu in the audition? Never. So uh, you know you you have to uh, focus on this one and saying oh this must be radical. Whenever I have a light, this will split. None of these will split. I never seen anything like that. There's no weak bond there. I mean pi bond is weak, but chlorine chlorine br br. Their lone pairs repelling, and you know professors probably mentioned many times that um, the sigma bond get weakened by the uh, repulsions of the um, lone pair, even oxygen oxygen. So uh, it's more logical thinking, like when light is given, this will break. Then homolytic cleavage will give you this radical. The radical is gonna attack. So, when you have a radical, where did you attack? You attack the hydrogen. So, where are the hydrogen? Especially most stable hydrogen. There's no tertiary hydrogen. So, what else is there? Well, you have this hydrogen, which is a secondary. And if you react, Okay, don't forget the reaction arrow. I mean, this question is not asking, but if you have to, if you are showing mechanism, you have to show carbon radical. This is the first propagation step. And then this radical in the second propagation step react with the Br2. So the Br2 react this way, and you can create this product. But you can say, wait, uh, whenever I have a plus sign, negative sign, or radical, not full valence, not uh, sorry, not full valence, but if you can have a resonance, you do resonance and see which one's the most stable. So you work with a stable guy, right? Uh, so here, can, you can I have a resonance? Let's follow red for resonance. One, two, make a double bond. This one goes to this carbon. So you can show um, structure after resonance. Double bond moved here, therefore the radical goes there. Yeah, so you can also form uh, this reacting with the Br2, right? Same manner. There. Okay, then which is the better? Um, I would accept both answer. But if you want to be very strict, um, you know, these are the reactant for next step. And you want the exothermic, uh, exothermicity the maximum and the activation energy is the lowest, right? According to the Hammond. If you look at the product, this double bond has a more substitution than this. So this product is more stable. Also, if you look at the uh, two structures in the resonance, they're together, but if you have to estimate the stability of electron on this secondary, on this primary, this is more unstable, more reactive. Therefore, this has to be you know, better in this case. So this will be the best answer for this problem, but I would accept both. This is um, asking, this problem is asking the conditions for this change. And um, first thing you do when you have a reactant and product, you compare the two and find out the changes. Then you find the typical conditions for typical type of reaction. Then you, you look for the variations if there is any, right? Uh, so you have alkyl halide. And you got the double bond, so elimination. But you notice this square ring moved. So there is a rearrangement. Together, it must be E1. If it is E1, before I double check, which I will, you know, um, you need a weak base. So something weak, and you want somewhat bulky. 
that helps and you want some heating, I mean lots of heating for elimination. And um, if this is given as an answer and you run E1 mechanism and see what happens, okay? So heating breaks up the bond, the weak bond. Then you have a secondary carbocation forming. This is a wedge, the methyl group. As you can see there, you have a more substituted carbon and uh, this ring is under angle strain and ring strain. So you know this electron here. If this was a regular, let's say, if that was the uh, regular methyl group, regular two methyl group, you can easily see the methyl group shifting. That's difficult sometimes because you are paying attention to those methyl groups, but if you pay attention to the electron negative charged particle moving to the positive um, carbon, this electron is migrating here. This is disappearing and you are drawing new line here. Okay. Then you can see this better. Or you can uh, number them. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So you break 1 and the 4. But forming 4 and the 5. You know. So you can do that. But either way you should see. The shifting. So this carbon is here, that car carbon is here, and this carbon is now here. These two electrons used to be there, making the square. Now it's shifted. So this carbon gained the electron, therefore this carbon must be positive. And now you have a tertiary with a no ring uh, angle strain. Then with the heating promoting already uh, more entropy, and then the volcanism helps attacking this hydrogen. So uh, you can have this weak base attacking strong acid form double bond here. Or, yeah, that wasn't the product, but uh, you can have this hydrogen, beta hydrogen reacting there and you can form and you get that as well so i don't see why you should not form this that's a little more difficult due to the uh, you know location ring, ring junction of the two uh, but it's not impossible forming double bond here is not as easy as well so i think this is a hypothetical question so this would be the answer so that goes in the box is a weak base with the heat to promote E1. Okay, here is one another uh, question in this type, reactant product given, and they're asking the condition type. Uh, as you can see, the more and more, if you deal with a real uh, molecule, realistic molecule, it is very critical to find the changes an analytical uh, skill for structure so when you learn earlier uh, lessons about structure you should be practicing uh, more three-dimensional perspective and different drawings and uh, keeping track of uh, you know in different drawings where is this group here and then after change uh, first, learning the structure, they're not given in the format of a reaction, but uh, you know, it's important to practice drawing structures in different form. That makes you get better in keeping track of what is what. So I hope you can see some of the groups here found here. I mean, in fact, everything that you see here is still there, surprisingly. Um, you get your attention ox to the oxygen, right? So oxygen is here, bound to these two, and it's here. Then you found these two methyl groups nearby, and when you connect this portion over here, do you see 
this carbon here is number one. I'm just randomly numbering without any rule at the moment. And this number two is right here with the two methyl groups. And somehow you broke this bond. But at the moment you break this bond, you know, oh, this is a tertiary. So I can break this bond if you make the pore leaving group O minus when you give electron, right? Uh, to uh, oxygen positive. We've seen these um, uh, reactions. So oh, I can break it. All right, then um, what's connected to two is this carbon with the, uh, you know, Ignore double bond. Double bond sometimes put there to deceive you guys. So ignore type of bond. Keep track of the groups. So there you have a two methyl group, isopropyl kind of group. So isopropyl group you see here, and this time, you know, that makes easy for you to notice double bond. But I'm going to ignore the type of bond again. So this carbon must be this carbon. I'm going to just put it three there. Three. Then the rest is easy, four, five, six, four, five, six, they're still there, nothing happening them. So that's good enough, right? So only thing you have to notice uh, and uh, connect it to the type of reaction you uh, understand and remember is, how do I connect two and the three? But earlier, you got the hint. When you broke the bond here, this becomes carbocation. Then, you know the double bond always react with the electrophile because they act as a nucleophile. So this one goes to the carbocation, if you form the carbocation. So you know the order of the changes you have to plan. First, you have to break this bond. Okay. Therefore, you know, in order to break this bond, I need to add hydrogen. So I need H plus for sure. Having H plus, let me save some time. We'll make the oxygen better leaving group. And in order to break off leaving group from tertiary, you need heating. So you heat it up. So let me save some time again. There you go. Tertiary carbocation inside, inter, I'm sorry, intramolecularly. You have a base, you have an acid. So there. Then this is a situation, right? You have, if you have a double bond and you have a H plus or any electrophile, an electron comes to the electrophile from the um, double bond, and where does the electrophiles go? It's going somewhere to give a positive charge on the other carbon of double bond, which is more substituted or having resonance, even when it's uh, less substituted with the resonance, you choose that, right? Here you don't have a choice for other resonance, so uh, you choose to put these things there, so you can put the carbocation on the tertiary, meaning this carbon carbocation goes here. That's the case. So, okay, let me save some time. There, you have number one and the two then the three right connected now then this number four this guy we never uh, labeled it but let's put it four there with the two methyl groups and this is now um, tertiary so very stable oh something is wrong here Sorry, uh, the tertiary is on the number four. Yep. I'm in the rush. This video is too long, so I start making mistake. Anyway, so uh, the carbocation is here, and uh, you have uh, one step left. The carbocation forming um, double bond. This is a uh, E one, right? So you need a base you are already heating up so you need to add a base somewhat bulky you want tubular oxide i mean tubular alcohol that's fine so a uh, big weak base upon heating look for uh, beta hydrogen to give you zeitzef product obviously 
So the base attacks here and you form E1 type of uh, elimination and you get the double bond between carbon 3 and the 4. So all you need is here. For this question, this is a physical organic uh, chemistry question. Uh, you have to propose a mechanism that works for both of them, but they should explain the opposite regiochemistry. There's nothing else. Everything's the same. You have only HBrs, no peroxide, nothing. Okay, same for both reactions, but it gives bromine. The first reaction, bromine on the more substituted of the double bond, the carbons. And the uh, second reaction gives the bromine on the less substituted carbon. Only th a difference you notice is here you have a sulfur and there you have a CH2. So, uh, you need to really think about the difference. Carbon has two hydrogens and two carbon bonds. Sulfur has two bonds and they have two lone pairs. So it's important to always know the Lewis structure. Looks like they care about the regio uh, selectivity, but they don't care about stereoisomers, the way they drew, you know, product. So they are focusing on regio. Why they choose this carbon, not the other carbon? Not about, you know, R or S attacking from top or bottom, nothing like that. So, let's start. Obviously, the double bonds, both cases, are acting as a base. Because you have a strong acid, actually. Depends on solvent, but H is completely dissociated, right? In water, especially. But I don't think this can be run in the uh, water. But anyway, so uh, this will happen in both cases. Therefore, I'm going to show uh, this mechanism first here. Oh gosh, I went down too much. So let me move up a little bit and show you again. So when you have double bond attacking hydrogen, hydrogen will certainly choose this carbon and give a more stable carbocation, right? This one. Not this one, not the other one. So you all know hydrogen went here to give this positive, not went there to give that positive. So that's a major. The question is about mechanism. So I'm going to show professor um, this, that I am more carefully uh, examining the possible uh, isomers. Then the uh, major isomer reacting with uh, Br minus. And then attacking top and bottom, but there is no racemization because there is no chiral uh, product at the end. So I don't care. I don't have to worry about to show that even the question is not asking. So I save time by just forgetting and focusing on Regio. So I got that. Okay. So the major gave you major. Because I have to explain, right? I have to explain. Just showing mechanism wouldn't do it. Um, here, I do this. See what happens. Um, so the difference uh, for students for this question is like, um, if you only drawing mechanism with the idea of 
tertiary carbocations are more stable than secondary, then primary, you know, then you have a trouble. It's always the case, focus is on like, which carbocation is more stable considering induction and the resonance. So here, let's put your hydrogen there and the positive there. Or you can also form hydrogen there and the positive there. Then you say which is more stable. If you only remember tertiary better than the uh, secondary and that's only habit you have, you have a problem here. I mentioned resonance, right? Constantly. Resonance can happen through a pi bond system. Yes, true, double bond, triple bond, or it could happen with the uh, lone pairs, or it could happen with a uh, negative charge. So, even neutral compound that has a uh, uh, empty p orbital, empty d orbitals can have a resonance. Like a boron has neutral charge with the three bonds, but it could have a resonance because it has a one empty orbital. So, how would you solve and tackle this kind of problem? You should have a habit of checking whenever you draw some intermediate. You better have a habit of checking induction and the resonance. When you check and think about resonance, not just the double bond, okay? Triple bond, lone pairs, atoms with empty p orbital, atoms with empty d orbitals everything. Here, you have lone pairs doing resonance. That's making this more stable than tertiary. Multiple times I mentioned that resonance is powerful. So, you must say major, minor. This little uh, justification it's a sufficient unless you want to write it out and you know you have a lot of time left so now oh, I forgot I was too excited so BR negative base found the acid in the higher concentration so they run into each other more frequently right so you put bromine there Therefore, if you want to say a little more here, um, this product is synthesized, made from uh, the major parenthesis, more stable intermediate that has opposite I want to use the same word opposite that's used in the question opposite regio chemistry so I'm saying this intermediate that's more stable already has opposite regio chemistry compared to this case that's why you form opposite regio chemistry product as a major when you have a sulfur and that's all due to the resonance here. So you, you can even um, say resonance make this more stable. You don't have to say because you're shown. But you know, uh, if you want to show uh, the structure after resonance, go ahead. Why not? If you have time. So as you can see, um, you cannot assume professor know what you mean and uh, also you need to uh, uh, look for the ways of figuring out what questions are asking exactly and uh, try to focus only you know, on answering questions because you don't have always enough time. And then when you write down answer, make it clear to anybody. Even some dumb people can uh, read and understand kind of uh, mindset. So hopefully this helps you to review all of the things we have done so far and get ready for the next items. Bye.